Welcome to the um, Monday show. It's the first Monday of the month and therefore we are doing the PATH series. So what I thought I'd do instead of me talking all the time, um, I would introduce somebody else onto the show who knows a bit more about a particular PATH than I do. And uh, today I'll just want to have a chat with Craig Burns, who uh, is involved in the Voodoo, the Voodoo PATH. Welcome Craig, thanks for joining. Hi Lay, how do you do? Good, thank you. Good, good, good. All right, so um, let's get started with voodoo. Um, I think voodoo is one of those paths that, firstly, is kind of difficult to find information about because it is said to be a closed practice. Um, and secondly, there are so many variations um, that we, you know, we find popping up over the world. We've got obviously the origins in, I would say the origins in West Africa, specifically Congo and things like that. But then with um, the slaves moving over to America, it's, um, you know, found its way to New Orleans and um, into um, Haiti yeah. and places like that. And you're in the UK, if, I, if I've got that correct. That's right. All right. So you're in the UK. How did um, you discover voodoo um, being in the UK itself? Because we, we kind of focus around um, the US and Africa. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I, 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 I took an unusual path into it, I think. Um, I, I was actually um, reading it. I was actually reading a book that somebody gave me and it was um, Colin Wilson's book of the occult. Um, and halfway through reading this book, um, I had a very unusual experience that was akin to what I was reading. And I'd never in all my life had anything like that. Um, and I'd been watching an occultist um, on YouTube. I so I got in touch. And uh, his practice was voodoo, mm -hmm. which is um, where, where I've always remained. I've never never gone in any, any other direction, really, to be fair. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it had quite an impact on me. Yeah. Good. So you're initiated into. And then that's how. Yeah, yeah. I mean, initiated into a society. Okay. Um, societies tend to work on their own. Um, you can get together if you wish, but um, working on your own um, is 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 perceived to be the norm, really. Uh, I am in contact with um, the papa of my society. He, he's an he's an author. He writes books. Uh, hang on, how do we do this? There you go, uh, Nathaniel. Mm. Um, he has written a book uh, about voodoo, mm -hmm. um, very interesting, and um, it, it kind of shows the evolution um, of voodoo, uh, which is another reason why, why I found, um, found it suited me. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 voodoo has evolved continually uh, since it, it left its origin, and uh, new Loire um, are created continually um, to suit certain purposes. Be, because it, it, it's traditional for it to evolve, um, for you to find it in a UK city, for instance, I, I would suggest it would probably be norm um, as, as it moves, uh, as the roots extend, as it were, um, the environments are going to change. And a voodoo will actually change with the environment. Mm. Um, the the legba uh, of, of the Congo is an old man with a walking stick. Mm. Uh, the legba of the... Uh, the, the urban environment uh, is like Bukafu. And uh, we have uh, sort of uh, re-evolved them as a, a more sort of um, streetwise um, trickster type, rather mm. than the agricultural Legba, which which originally um, was the, um, the Legba of the Crossroads. Yeah. So yeah. we've evolved it a little bit more, so that what it will do will suit an urban environment rather than a rural environment which i don't live in a rural environment yeah it's something and of course the game yeah sorry sorry i was just going to say it, it's something we sort of find in a lot of paths um i mean i see it in traditional witchcraft um where we connect with the land but at the same time that land changes it, it evolves um you know there are still, still some people who yeah. do live on farms and plots and have gardens other people don't they live in big cities and all they have really is a balcony with some pot plants um or some 
container plants. I was told to stop using the word pot plants because in America it means marijuana plants. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what it, yeah. <laughs> But um, so yeah, I think I think all of these paths are kind of evolving um, and becoming more urban. Um, they have to because most of us are urban now. Um, you know, we saw the evolution of kind of urban oh, yeah. shamanism. Yeah. 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 The, the, the old gun, um, it were found in Haiti, mm. who were, became, um, uh, they, they, they got their Loire of revolution and didn't exist in Africa. It didn't exist mm. in Africa at all. The, what they, what they thought was that that was perhaps slaves that had escaped into the mountains and come in contact with Northern American, uh, Indians. And uh, they, of course, they already had revolutionary and sort of war gods in place, and and that's essentially where the the Ogun came from. So mm. even at that time, there were some of the people's beliefs, mm. and bring them into their own. Mm. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And the Ogun has has also evolved yet again. I mean, the Ogun now is seen as the diplomat, uh, not the revolutionary anymore, mm. or maybe revolutionary in a different manner, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, makes sense actually. Um, regarding all the different um, various paths of voodoo, uh, we have Santeria, we have, um, what's it, Palomambo, I forget them myself, but there, there's, a, there's a lot of yeah. different varieties, um, and I always get confused about, you know, why there are so many, um, I do realise that they kind of are focused in particular countries and particular areas, um what is is there a specific one that you follow uh haitian um petro okay. um is the form, form of voodoo yeah a left hand path um it, it, the voodoo does break down into a, a rada and a petro um mm. the petro come from the revolution of haiti uh where they performed a riot called the petro riot Mm. Um, which um, triggered the revolution there um, and, and freed the slaves, I suppose. Mm. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a little bit, they're a little bit faster acting, um, a little bit hotter, mm. um, as they would call them. Uh, and that, that's the side of voodoo that I, that I have that I have taken on board. There is a solar side, obviously, with Rada, where they have the temples and the get-togethers, and you see the possessions and what have you. But you, you wouldn't. Um, particularly see a, a, a petro ritual unless it was something really quite serious mm. so is the petro more kind of um a solitary path rather than a community you said it i mean you mentioned a community but yeah it's the yeah very much so i mean very much the path of the bacor um which, which is, is the representation of the petro the, the sorcerer uh, essentially um mm. but it's still worship um, it, it, it's still not at a level of command. Uh, you know, we're still on a level of worship here. Um, so yeah, that, that's that. That's the side that I because I obviously I don't have a temple or that I could go to, or um, and I know very very few other um, petro practitioners. Uh, to be fair, um, mm. especially in the UK, a lot of Americans. I've spoken to quite a few Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Because the way, from what I, I remember and understand, is that when we look at the Lua, um, there are kind of um, two, I don't really know what to call them, avenues, channels, but there's the, what you would, what you, you have just called the Petro and the Rada, so the good spirits and the evil spirits almost. And then there are, um, what was it, a hundred of each, and then the hundred and first is uh, Legba. So he's kind of on both sides. So he that's why he forms the gateway. That's is correct. That, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, let, let, you, you will find quite a few of the Loire represented on, in both Rada and Petro. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Quite a few. And it, it, it's like um, uh, almost diff, the, the two different faces of, of the same thing. Mm. Um, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you, you, you can make choices, obviously, as to which one. You, you feel it's going to be more useful in your life, you know. Mm. Um, I think in an urban environment, a, a faster acting Loire is probably more effective than something that would work seasonally, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, because I suppose seasonally that would be more associated with the agricultural aspects rather than the urban aspects. Yeah, 
very much so yeah mm. very much so um I, I i have had experience with you with actually doing a little bit with the rada um there was a lawa that i did approach and um, that was um she's the lawa of the marketplace okay. and um I actually found her very, very easy to work with, and um, it was very successful too. Mm. Um, something that I have found, it, something that I find undeniable, is that I do have effects on my environment um, through the, the, through this particular practice. Um, undeniable to me, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, I, I found most of the Loire are quite happy to talk to you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there is this, I'm, I'm going to, this might be a bit of a sticky topic, um, but there's a whole aspect of that you know, people will probably bring up is cultural appropriation. Um, it's not appropriation, you know, I think this, this term gets um, twisted about a bit too much sometimes, you know, sometimes it's the whole, um, you are, you shouldn't be doing this because you are not X, Y, and Z, whereas the appropriation side is more, you are profiting from it. Um, and you shouldn't be type of thing, but you know I've I've faced it myself. So I'm actually wondering how you actually deal with that yourself um, and your own society, which yeah. means you care. Yeah, I mean the, 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 you, there is actual representation of the Irish um, yeah. within the Voodoo Loa. I mean, okay. Mama Bridget, who is uh, Baron mm. Sami's uh, consort is uh she 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 became a loire based on the treatment of the irish in america you know mm. during the period of the slavery yeah um and it's how she found a foot in that so and it, i would say that that this the the actual uh, voodoo society seems to be very prepared to take on mm. like i was saying the the old gun actually came from somewhere else mm. um, um mama bridget also i mean a, a, a white loire um mm. yeah I, I i don't think it really fits with um the way that voodoo has behaved over the years and it, it's been so happy um mm. to take on um take on other people's ideas and other people's gods of course oh yeah i did actually i was in conversation with a guy in, uh, in america from new orleans um mm. called time print Iameka. he was this hoodoo mm. priest mm. um and he used to go in his lives quite a bit. He had a live running for about a year, and I was talking to him. And uh, at, at one point, uh, I had to put in the comments, I put, listen, guys, um, you do realise I'm white, right? And um, <laughs> the, the time I said, of course, you know you're white, Craig. It's absolutely obvious. Mm. And uh, we got into a conversation then about, well, could you be white? And uh, there was a fellow in the, in the, in the chat, and he, he said, um, he said, you know, being black, he said, nothing to do with the colour of your skin, though. He mm. said, it's about your heart. Yeah. He said, it's about being black heart, Craig. Yeah, mm. that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, and this was amongst a group of um, uh, but black American uh, uh, voodoo Assam, uh, essentially. And I found them very, uh, very amicable people, to be fair. No issues about me being white. Didn't mm. seem to think it was cultural misappropriation or anything like that. I'm not really come across yeah. it to be honest yeah i, I didn't I, you know i think it's just the general public who kind of like have this idea that um you know they're right and everybody else is wrong um it's yeah. it's, it's it's the same as, as somebody who's just started um, practicing magic and read their first book and now all of a sudden they know everything um and everybody else must you know <laughs> be quiet because yeah. you know they they are the authority um but uh, I, it's, you know, the other question that always comes up is um, what happens if you are, I'm, like I'm a white person, what happens if an African god approaches me and says they want to work with me? What do I do? And I've actually had people tell me that you have to reject that god because you are not part of that culture. I'm like, no, bullshit. You know these these spirits they don't they don't have these barriers and these lines between race and everything else they don't care no um no i don't just, think so it's just humans yeah mm. very interesting yeah. Yeah. yeah i think it i think it's very dangerous to assume that you know what a god likes yeah um yeah. i don't really see how we can we we've got the capacity to work that one out yeah exactly yeah. you know 
Yeah. Um, they were very willing to take on Yahweh when they realized that you could pray to Yahweh and get things from him. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they were very taken by that idea. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that yeah. again comes back to the whole idea of, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying traditional witchcraft, but more the, the folklore practices of Europe. Um, you know, the, the Christians kind of came along and said, we have the one true God. And all the folk people were just going, oh, well, here's a, here's a new deity that's coming along. And let's see if it actually works with, with all the others that we've got. Um, but it wasn't that transference from like a polytheistic to a monotheistic aspect. It was just inclusion. <laughs> you know? So that's a beautiful dog. Absolutely gorgeous. Correct, correct, yeah. Mm. I mean, they, 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 the African slaves were taught very little about Catholicism, really. I mean, they were mm. really just shown a whole load of pictures of saints, and they uh, probably expected to work it out themselves from there, I think. Must have been a, an, an enormous language barrier, anyway. It's actually something I read um, a while back, was that the when the, the uh, missionaries went to Africa, they found it extremely easy to convert the African people to Catholicism because the voodoo tradition um, could, can be viewed quite monotheistic from their perspective anyway because you have, um, is it mm. Dumba, Dumbala is the like overarching that, That's correct, God yeah there is a creator Yeah, mm. and then all the lower are like, um, you know, full make, make up the, the body of that, that creator uh, being as it were which is very similar to That's Kabbalah, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So Catholicism the, um, with, its, with its God and then mm -hmm. saints um, was very similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could, yeah, they could see the same format, couldn't they? When they were, when they were being mm -hmm. shown that, yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, the, when they were looking at some of the ways that the, um, uh, some of the symbology that came along with the saints, it almost fitted in with their own. Yeah, like mm. when they looked at George and they went, oh, well, there's a red cross there. So that mm. must be Legba. Mm. Yeah. I think John the Baptist became um, Simbi Micaiah, mm. who uh, is the sorcerer and the, the fair of magic. Yeah. yeah. I think so I th they, 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 they were looking. They were looking. Yeah. I, th I think we saw that mostly um, with the New Orleans voodoo practice, which were, became more of a, a mixture of voodoo and hoodoo. Um, where they incorporated yeah. the, the saints a lot more into the practice than, say, the, the Haitian uh, voodoo. Um, so, yeah, yeah, you definitely saw that with the, the inclusion of Catholicism and the saints um, and such things. But, mm. yeah. Um, I think the only difference, perhaps, with Dambala is that um, they, they, they do actually believe that the Creator came and left. And that we don't have a, a God creator to appease to, you see. Uh, the, what was left was this, was this um, was these Loires that lived within the, within the light spectrum. Okay. Uh, apparently, when Dambala decided to leave, um, he, he said to uh, the Red Ray, which is like, um, and well, what, what would you like? And he said, everything. So he said, right, no problem, and off he shot. And, and that was it. Like, but then became the only person you could go through now to touch the Loire. So okay. Legba is kind of like, you know, head cheese <laughs> in lots of ways. Yeah, no, I mean, so yeah. how I've always seen Legba as well is that um, obviously you've got to go to Legba before you can do anything else, basically. Um, the gate, the gate keeps Absolutely. Up. Yeah. yeah. The crossroads yeah. god. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah you've uh, got to develop a, a relationship first. Yeah. Would you advise anybody to explore voodoo practices on their own without reaching out to a community? Or would you advise against it? I, 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 I personally, I, I've been lucky to have a community to go to uh, and, and to have somebody to mentor me. Um, mm. I think the process would have been very extended had I've not had that. Mm. Um, it, you, you could. There are miles and miles of literature that you could read about this, and and there's very. I, I mean, it, there's probably only a few books really, when you think mm. about it. When I look at what I've read, where I can say, yeah, there was specific enough. Um, that's that's the issue. Yeah, it's kind of like you you can read, uh, read and read and read, but you can't really get into the nitty gritty of it 
you have to actually get that that one on one mentorship almost. That's what I found. Yeah. 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 I when as I was going through it and as I was having experiences, I had someone to bounce it off. Mm. I think without that it would have took a lot longer to understand what was happening. Yeah. 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 Um and I I assume that the um the specific um voodoo practice that somebody would go and look for would be very specific to their actual area the country and the place they're actually living in i, I think that's probably best, best policy um and I, I i i often wonder how some of the more ancient forms of the loa may not be that relevant to us now Unless you unless you're fortunate to, enough to be living in an agricultural community, and then yeah, I would suggest that 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 yeah, why not? Absolutely. Yeah, hmm? yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So when it comes to specific voodoo practices, you did mention that with the with the petro, there it, it's not really more about the um, you know the possession and things like that. From what I understand, when you um, become initiated. Um, there's a process that you go through uh, regarding the MET, I think it's called, which is the, the lower that yeah. you take into the head. Um, is, is that something that happens with, with the form that you practice yourself? Okay, so I, I assume what we're talking about is the master of your head. Yes. Uh, the the MET attack, yeah? Yes, that's it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah the, the master of your head would be the lower that you would be most likely aligned with mm. um so obviously when, when i first started to study voodoo because i don't come from a background of voodoo i've not grown up with the idea that mm. my family in actual fact possibly would have an aloha that they would align with um so uh then it was time to find out well who could that be you know mm. um normally it's going to reflect your life to a degree um who whatever loa this is um i I uh, started to work with the old gun. Uh, I'm, I'm ex-military, by the way. Uh, I, I served in the forces as a kid. Mm. Um, went to Northern Ireland, worked with the United Nations, things like that. Um, and it was a very part, big, big part of my life. And it, and it actually has been um, for, for my, my granddaddy. He was in the Second World War. Great granddaddy fought in the First World War. You know, it, it, the military has been quite a big thing in my family. Mm. Um, and when I actually started... Um, working with the old gun and, and starting to, to try to appease them a little bit, you know, talk to them. Um, I run a business where I have contracts that I hand out. Mm. And there was a contract that I was dying to get rid of. And it wasn't long before military people started to turn up to, you know, one of the guys had even served with. It was quite mm. remarkable how all of a sudden this military connection started to pour in, which is something I've not had anything to do with for perhaps 20, 30 years. Mm um so I'd, I'd more work with the old gun and then before you you know it you're trying to work it starts to become a little bit more obvious to you as to what the master of your head could possibly be mm -hmm. um and I, I think i think the old gun is it is master of my head it does appear to be yeah it does appear to be and as yeah. i've got older i'm no longer the war hall i'm now the diplomat so it maybe that would show i don't know it's an interesting concept especially when you start relating it to other other Past and traditions is, um, you know, I think some people have actually likened it to the Holy Guardian Angel. Um, others would probably yeah. say say that it's yeah, very the, much so. Yeah, but others would probably say that it's the patron or the matron or something like that. But um, yeah, the Holy Guardian Angel seems to yeah. fit quite well. Yeah, mm. yeah. well, they, 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 it, it, the Africans uh, believe that there are there's, there's sort of three spirits um, in possession of you. Mm -hmm. is you who you are and then you have the the loire the master of your head which will govern your actions and then there's another section of you that comes from a very primordial area that has never seen lights or or anything other than consciousness um mm -hmm. i often wonder if that was perhaps what they meant when they were, when they were talking about the guardian angel whether that could have been the voodoo guardian angel the actual mm -hmm. ache uh, of your body like your chi for instance that kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Yeah, and actually that 
Yeah, it, it's um, I'd, yeah. Coming back to that, I would actually say that the 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 metet is would be the holy guardian angel. That's the the, the spiritual aspect that is guarding your your path, as you said. Um, the chi yeah. would be the energy, the prana, the breath, um, and you've got yourself, which could be considered like the the physical body, and the, they kind of hold each other together, sort of thing. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Definitely see parallels, yeah. even with um, parallels with with Kabbalah. Uh, you know the three yeah three main aspects of yeah. the soul. Yeah. You 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 you'll find uh, Hindu uh, thinking as well within. Yeah. 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 I always I always love all the bridges and parallels. It just fascinates me to to see to try and relate um, you know one thing with another thing and. I always find it funny because people are arguing, no, I'm right, I'm right, and they're talking about the same thing at the end of the day. They just call it by different names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that many times. Yeah, they just won't have it, will they? Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's how have different people seen the same thing, isn't it? And how have they explained it? Mm. And um, how does it appeal to you? That's the other thing that's important, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I, like, I like the art side. Of voodoo there's a lot of expressive art involved in it mm. um with the drawing of the vase and 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 and, and you know i mean it, it just goes on from that it and, and that's something that's really appealed to me i do like that mm. um makes me feel like i'm adding part of my consciousness to it as well yeah mm. yeah well actually one thing that i always find interesting um if we compare to demonolatry, specifically working with the, the seals of the, the, yeah. the demons from the Goetia or something like that, um, you know, they're not usually worked with or seen as being the same as the, the Veve from the, the Lua, but I could see them yeah. being worked very similarly. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm sure some people do, just not very public, you mm. know. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I, I, it's the same idea, isn't it? It really is the same thing. It's you know you focus in your mind in a direction based on a symbol now rather than a mm. sentence, um, and your interaction with that symbol, of course, you know how you read it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very similar. Very similar. Yeah. yeah, and the unconscious yeah, mind that. speaks in speaks in images and symbols, so. Same exactly. thing, you know, coming yeah, back to the sigil exactly. magic, I mean, that's the whole purpose. You implant the sigil in your unconscious mind so it can do what it needs to do. So, yeah, so yeah. many parallels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it, they're just coming from different parts of the world. Exactly. Yeah. But that, that that's what's fascinating. You know, there, there are all these, they are from different parts. I mean, we can't really say that demonolatry is this ancient practice, but, um, you know, we can look at when it comes to symbols, when it comes to hieroglyphics, um, you know, um, uh, uh, cuneiform and things like that, you know, these are symbolic writing um, that were separated mm. by, by, you know, continents. Um, there was obviously trade and stuff that started happening at one stage, but before that it was still around and it just, it must have come out of somewhere. And there was all very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, yeah. I'm wrapping on. We, yeah. we, I, I can only think that we, at some point, we all experience the same kind of conscious um, signals and it, it, it drives us in a direction to do something. And, and that's the only reason I can think that there can be these similarities, other than, like you say, trade routes, possible communication. But mm. a lot of these things were done before that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, is there any advice you can give to anybody who may be wanting to explore the path of voodoo and doesn't know where to go? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, with, the, with the voodoo, obviously, I mean, I, I don't perform um, sacrifices, for instance. I don't do things like that. Um, mm. and, and, and the art of possession, really, comes when there's groups of people yeah. uh, not so you wouldn't want to be possessed when you're on your own i wouldn't have thought um so the the, the medium that we use to create that possession is we do it through dream so mm. we're asking to possess, be possessed while we're asleep 
so that it can be, they, they can be shown through dream. So um, I would say if you're going to do, if you're going to take on voodoo, or you would like to get involved with it, then perfect your meditation techniques first. That, oh, yeah. that will be a huge help to you, a huge mm. help. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what. That's. Uh, but I'm gonna tell everybody. No, anyway. I, I don't think there's any reason why anybody. Yeah. Um, any specific books, authors, or anything that uh, you can direct people to? Oh, absolutely. Um, um, this is the um, l absolute definitive guide to Vive. Mm. Um, is it written by uh, Milo Rigord? It's an expensive book, and it is hard to find. It's out of print. Um, I think I paid over hundred pounds for this, but uh, as, you, as you can see, all of the they mm. are present. There's, there's hundreds upon hundreds of they. It's written in three different languages, uh, but yeah, the definitive guide to the they, definitely. Okay. All right. uh, and of course, this book, which is actually written by a choreographer called Maya Darren, mm. and, and she went out to Africa uh in the 50s and joined in with the uh with the rituals that were being held in the temples and actually managed to be become possessed mm. and started to understand the whole definition of the loire and the way that voodoo works in the congo but absolutely superb but superb okay. just hold um, it up again there we go there we go okay you see that there we go yeah yeah Cool stuff. Okay. And of course, I can't leave this gentleman out. Nathaniel Harris. Yeah. No. I, Nathaniel I've heard, Harris. Definitely heard of Nathaniel. Yeah. Long time ago. Nathaniel Harris runs the society that I am part of. Mm. Um, uh, it's, um, if you were to get in touch with him, if you are interested in doing voodoo, if you were to get in touch with Nathaniel, I'm sure they'd be more than happy. Um, to consider taking on as a student mm. i'm sure he was good stuff okay. um there is a small charge but yeah, mm. yeah. Always is, yeah. absolutely yeah but um, um yeah that, that is the definitive book of what i do <laughs> <laughs> good stuff yeah all right um yeah uh so let's wrap that up uh, is there anything else you just want to want any advice or anything you want to tell people yeah uh, it, it, all, all I would say is voodoo is very real. If you are going to um, uh, take take uh, take part in voodoo, I I would uh, I would treat it very seriously. If I were you, it is most certainly a very potent form of um, sorcery without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Mm. Um, and anybody that would like to be a serious sorcerer, I, I would say certainly give it a try. Put it in your toolbox. It's well worth it. I assure you. Yeah. Cool. Good stuff. All right, and I'll grab the. I'll, I'll ask you to send me the names and titles of the books, and I can put them in the description so everybody else can um, go and see if they can find them. Okay. Now. All right. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's my tricky time, but they are there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I said, you, that one book you said was very difficult to find. So, if you could, if people can find it, it's good for them. <laughs> yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, no problem at all. Lovely. Yeah. And You're really uh, well. thanks for everybody watching. And I hope you en hope everybody enjoyed this and it gave some extra perspective on things. All right. And that's it for now. Cheers. Bye bye. <laughs>